When I was a young child, my family lived in a trailer on the edge of town. My bedroom was a, was a glorified closet where my bed, a mattress that sat on the floor, rested under the window. Directly across from my bed was a, was a small walk-in closet that was supposed to have a sliding door but didn't. My parents always put a nightlight on the wall next to my bed. And every night I'd beg my parents not to close the bedroom door. I was six, and the door would get jammed in the frame, making it very hard to open. Most nights I was lucky, and they would leave the door cracked. However, other nights, the door would be closed. The trailer park was loud at night. The locals would stand in their yard, drinking and, and car carousing. As strange as it may sound, I welcomed this noise. There was this tall mirror in the closet, and on the nights when the, when the bedroom door was closed and neighbors were being quiet, I would see this ghastly figure standing in the mirror and hear it tapping on the glass. Gray skin stretched taunt over its bony face and toothless grin. The very sight of him was enough to make me piss myself. I'd lay there quietly with the blanket pulled up to my head, staring at the man tapping on the mirror. He'd whisper loudly, Hey, little boy. Let me in. I don't remember if this ever stopped. My parents ended up buying a house in the other side of town around the time I, I started first grade. I had my own bedroom, and my bedroom door also had a closet. Several years passed, and I had forgotten all about the man in the mirror. I was at a sleepover with my friend Devin when I heard a very familiar whisper. Oh, hello there, little boy. Long time no see. I opened my eyes, and without moving my head, I darted my eyes around the room. There in the vanity mirror, I could make out the faint silhouette of a man. He moved quickly and left the mirror, though I could still see him in the peripheral. I realized that he wasn't in the mirror, but rather the man was standing outside the window. I turned my head and locked eyes with him as he pulled a single bony figure to his lips. My other hand reached to the glass like it was water, and went, to, and went to unlatch the window itself as I let out a bl His other hand reached through the glass like it was water and went to unlatch the window itself as I let out a blood-curdling scream. Devin woke up and turned on the lamp. The light in the room made it all but impossible to see out the window. There in the blackness of night, I lost sight of the creepy man and the process got punched in the arm by Devin, who was left in accepting of my explanation that there was a monster right outside the window. Eventually, Devin turned off the lamp and I went to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, the window was standing wide open and a cool breeze blew across the bed. Devin was gone. His parents searched everywhere for him. His picture was shown on the news. I told them the story of the creepy man in the window, but no one believed me. Devin went missing for the greater part of three days, and when a search, part, when a search party trudged into the woods from the remain of the 13-year-old boy in two pieces cut in half on a concrete slab in the middle of the woods. Devin was buried the next day. His parents wouldn't let me go to the funeral. My parents grounded me for lying about the old man. They remembered my stories from back in kindergarten and thought me crazy or a liar. Probably both. For the rest of my seventh grade year, I, wouldn't, I would hear kids whisper about how I was the last person to see Devin alive. Time passed as I always did. I grew up and went to college. After settling down and getting married, I had a son of my own. For the better part of five years, I, I had absolutely no problems out of my kid. His name was Devin. I'd had nightmares about the man ever since seventh grade, and I made it a point to bolt the windows in the house shut. I made sure that my son didn't have any mirrors in his room. I knew all too well about the things that went bump in the night. Years of, it, years of inactivity had all but convinced me that I, was, that I had just imagined the whole, the whole ordeal, but the, but the death of my best friend was enough to make sure I remained vigilant. My son turned six the other day, and we celebrated with cake and ice cream. That night, I put him in bed and read him the story, The Monster, at the end of this book, in my, in my best impression of the Muppet Grover. He laughed, and his laugh laughter got slower. Eventually, he fell asleep, clutching his stuffed bear as I put the book on his, on his chest of drawers, and I, I turned, turned on the nightlight and made sure that the closet door was closed before leaving his bedroom door wide open and the hallway light on. I sat in the living room watching television. There was a thunderstorm raging outside. The emergency weather alert interrupted my episode of Arrow, and before I could get any information, the thunder boomed outside and the power went out. The rain beat against the window. Sitting in the dark, I lit some candles and went to put one in my son's room, 
when the rain slowed down and the weather started to mellow. My wife was still at work and I wasn't at all tired, so I sat in the candlelight reading a book when I heard a faint tappy noise on the window across from me. There was a man-sized shadow blocking the blue glow of the human moonlit night. The tapping continued and I heard a raspy whisper saying, Not so little boy has a little boy. Let me in. I reached into the hallway closet and grabbed the shotgun. With two barrels of 12-gauge buckshot, I walked out, walked out the front door and stared at the man. He stood there tapping on the window and paying me no mind. Without hesitation, I pulled both triggers and peppered him with buckshot. Metal pellets beat against my house and went straight through the man as I heard my son shout in his sleep. That wasn't very nice, not naughty, not so little boy, the man whispered with his raspy voice. I ducked inside the house and locked and locked the door behind me as the man turned to follow me. The tapping on the window became pounding on the door. Let me in! Let me in! The whisper became a hoarse scream. My son, now wide awake and holding my um, to my leg for dear life, started bawling his eyes out. The man at the door shouted, Those are my tears! Let me in! Let me in! I grabbed two more shotgun rounds from my pocket and reloaded the gun as bright lights hit the tiny window of the front door. I looked away for a moment and the man was gone. Moments later, my wife turned the key and opened the door as I stood there with a shotgun in her hand and with my son crying at our feet. There was there's no viable explanation on earth for that one. She didn't ask any questions. After getting me to put down the gun and grabbing our son, she walked out the door and I never saw either of them again. She called out the police from the car and I was taken into custody for psych psychiatric evaluation. I sat there through one session after another with doctor after therapist after social work and explained that, explaining that a man was trying to break into our house and I had shot at him. For whatever reason, no one believed me. I guess that in retrospect, I guess in retrospect that telling the psychiatrist that a monster that lived in your closet as a child showing up on your doorstep 25 years later is a bit of a stretch. Still, it happened. The worst part of knowing the truth is that no one wants to believe it. This thing stalked me as a child. It killed my best friend, and, and now it was stalking my son, and all I could do was sit in the loony bin helplessly waiting to either be released or to be sent to a different facility. The worst part is that there's a little window in, in the door to my room here at the hospital. Sometimes at night when the hallway is dark and the moonlight outside my window is bright enough, I can barely make out his toothless grin smiling in the reflection on the door. I'll look up and see him standing at the window as he taps lightly on the glass and whispers, Invite me in. Your son was delicious.